How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting day because we are finally going to start mocking up my rye wire harness. So let's roll that intro and get into it. Alright, so I'm still waiting on a few engine parts to come in uh, so I can finish the oil lines for the turbo. So in the meantime, I thought it would be a good idea to get started on the wiring or at least start mocking up my raw wire harness. So that's the plan for today. Not sure how far I'm going to get on it, but uh, I at least want to get some of the mock-up done. That's going to help me figure out what I still need to order in terms of sensors and it'll also help me figure out how I'm going to route some of the wires into the engine bay. So here's kind of what we're working with today. So I've got alternator wire here and starter wire. This is the chassis harness. This will be the plate that gets mounted to the firewall. Uh, I got a ground kit. This is the engine side of the harness. This is the ECU side of the harness. And then I have my Honda S300 here. So plan for today is at the very least uh, to get this mounted. Um, I would like to get this hooked up to the ECU and the chassis harness. And then I want to start hooking up these wires to the engine just to find out what's left over. And that'll help me determine what sensors I still need to order and uh, also how I'm going to route the wires. So it's not going to be finalized, but at least it'll be a quick mock-up and it'll give me an idea of what I need to do. So first thing I want to do is get this plate mounted to the firewall. Now I've already gone ahead and mounted my catch can here because I knew that the catch can would be fairly close to where I'm mounting the plate. So I wanted to make sure this was mounted first and that's going to give me an idea of how I'm going to mount the plate. So ideally the plate would mount just to the middle of this opening here but uh, I'm going to have to offset it a bit, otherwise it's going to come into contact with the catch can. So uh, to do that, I'm going to enlarge this hole. So basically this strip of tape here is the edge of the plate, and I want it to be about a quarter inch in from there. So I'm going to take out the grinder. I've already marked out roughly where I want it. Um, so I'm going to cut this away, and then uh, we'll test fit the plate on there, see how it fits, and then we'll bolt it in place. One eternity later. All right, well that took longer than it needed to. My compressor didn't want to keep up, so I ended up linking both of my compressors together, had them both running at the same time, and then I could keep the air grinder going the whole time. So, got my hole here. Oh my goodness, shadows everywhere. So the hole is finished now. This should give me plenty of room to get the plate mounted and have room for the wires. So now I think I'm just going to mock up the plate with some tape get it straight, find the place I want to mount it. Then I will drill the holes in the four corners, get it bolted up. Then that part is done, for the basic mock-up anyway. All right guys, so here's what we're looking like right now. Uh, so I got this snugged up, it's not super tight yet because I will be swapping out these bolts for proper ones. Um, I guess the kit didn't come with mounting hardware, so I'm gonna have to find some tapered head uh, bolts for this, but for now, this'll do. Uh, so it fits pretty good, it lines up decent. It's not quite lined up with the catch can because I already know the catch can is a little bit crooked. Uh, once we have lines and stuff in here, I don't think it's going to be very noticeable. But in looking at this edge right here with the edge of this, it's pretty close. Um, I did make the holes a little oversized, so there is a little bit of adjustability side to side. So if I get super picky about it, I can still adjust it and get it perfect. So as it is right now, I'm going to leave it, uh, start getting the wires mocked up. So I think what I'm going to do first is uh, run the harness inside the car 
and attach it to this plate here. So basically the ECU side of the harness is going to attach to the plate. So we got this plug here and it gets tightened with this nut right here. So it'll just get threaded on. So I got the harness pushed through the plate from inside the car. Now it's just a matter of tightening it up with this nut. So I'm gonna thread it on there quick, get it tight and see how it looks. All right guys, check that out. That looks sick. So mounting this is basically done. Now we gotta go inside the car. So now from the mounting plate up here, I have the ECU harness coming here. So this is what'll plug into the ECU. Uh, this is the chassis harness plug. So I've got that plugged in already. Uh, we got the green plug here. And this plug here normally would go through the driver's side firewall, but because this is a tucked harness, it gets run inside. So this actually gets run under the dash and we'll go to the driver's side and plug in there. So that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to grab my ECU real quick and get this plugged in. All right, ECU is plugged in. I've decided I'm not gonna worry too much about cleaning all this up yet. Main focus is getting the car running and driving. All the cleanup stuff can be done afterwards. So now if we go to the driver's side, here is the rest of the harness that used to run through the driver's side firewall. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to run most of this into the engine bay yet. Uh, but for now, this is the plug from the rye wire harness. And then this is the driver's side engine harness. So it's just a matter of connecting these two now. So those fit together perfectly, so that's all good. Now I'm gonna work on the engine side. So now it's basically a matter of plugging all of these into the sensors that I have on the engine itself. And then this would just plug into the plate on the firewall. So if I ever need to pull the engine, it's just a matter of unhooking this. And then there's no more wiring to be done and the engine can come out. So that really simplifies it. But before I start plugging stuff in in the engine, there's a few more things that I have to hook up. So um, I got the intake here, which I'm going to mount. I'm going to get the fuel rail put on. Um, I got a throttle body that I got to put on. So uh, a bunch of that stuff's got to go together. Uh, I think I still have the idle air control valve and some of the other pieces that go on here. So uh, I'm going to work on the intake for a little bit, get this all put together and put on the engine. guys I got a little carried away and got the intake completely put back together this is a stock H22 a1 intake manifold that's had the butterfly valves removed and it's also been ported so uh, the reason I'm going this route is because a lot of aftermarket intakes don't fit in an EK chassis they end up hitting up against the firewall so that's why I decided to go this route you can get aftermarket ones that are a lot lower profile, but they cost over a thousand bucks. And I don't wanna spend that kind of money right now. So I'm gonna make this one work. Um, so I ended up robbing some parts from my parts engine. This is basically just for mock-up purposes. So the idle air control valve is looking pretty crusty. So I'm probably gonna be getting another one of those. The starting air valve, I've done a bit of research on and turns out a lot of people just end up deleting this. So I may remove this and just make a block off plate for it. As well as the fast idle air valve under here. Apparently a lot of people delete that as well. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. I don't wanna mess with too much stuff that has to do with the idle for now. Uh, until I get the car running, then I can kind of experiment a bit and see uh, how this affects the idle. Some people even delete the idle air control valve, but uh, I don't think I wanna go that route yet. Main focus is getting the car running. Once it's running, that's when I can start cleaning everything up. So fuel rail should stay mounted on here permanently now. Uh, the intake should stay together permanently now. EGR block off should remain on here permanently. So that's why I sealed everything with RTV. Um, my only concern is that I may need to remove this yet. Depending on how the idler control valve works, um, I may actually have to buy a spacer plenum for this. You can get a one inch riser for this, which will basically put it back to stock height. 
and then uh, I won't have any interference here. But I was able to get it together, so as long as I don't have to take it apart too often, it shouldn't be a problem. I also have the intake air temp sensor here, which will need to be replaced because this one's pretty busted, but for mock-up purposes, this will work just fine. Um, I also spent a bit of time extracting all of the studs out of here, and uh, I'm gonna be replacing them with my Downstar hardware, so that'll be these bolts right here. So, I guess we're to the point now where I can finally install the intake on the engine. So I'm gonna track down where my gasket is. I know I have it kicking around somewhere. And then uh, we're gonna get this thing mounted. So, pretty stoked about that. All right guys, I am starting to realize the inconvenience of running Downstar hardware. Now there were three bolts while installing the intake that were inaccessible with the fuel rail on. So I had to remove the idler control valve so I could remove the fuel rail so that I could access the bolts which I then found out were still inaccessible and I had to modify an allen wrench in order to reach in there. Finally got it all tight, got everything back together. So it was a bit of a process, but uh, we got her done. But anyway, intake is on and uh, I just started piecing a bunch of stuff together here. So um, yes, these are all old parts that are off of my old H22. Uh, so it would be nice to have new shiny parts, but it's not necessarily a need to have. So. These will work for the time being. I know they were working on the other engine, so I'm not too concerned about that, but I would like to replace with brand new parts. Same with some of these sensors, like on the VTEC solenoid and stuff. I would like to replace a lot of this stuff, but for the time being, I just want to get the car running. This can always be replaced later. So now I think I'm finally to the point where I can start plugging in the engine harness and see where everything goes, how everything's gonna get routed. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward because every one of these wires is labeled. So we should be able to find out where they plug into pretty easily. There's even an extra wire in here. So this one will actually run through the firewall and will go inside the car. So if I wanna hook up something extra, like a sensor or something like that, I can do that. Uh, or even one of the gauges I could probably do. So it's there, so the option is there. But anyway, I'm just gonna start plugging stuff in and uh, kind of figure this out, see where we end up. Alright guys, so I think I got most of the wires for the most part plugged in. Um, there's a few sensors that I will have to replace because the old ones are broken. So those are on order, we're waiting for those to come in. So we'll just kind of have to leave that for now. But uh, yeah, we got the distributor plugged in here. Uh, if we move on over here, I got the VTEC solenoid. We are missing a connector for the VTEC oil pressure, so I guess the rye wire kit didn't come with that connector. Uh, I checked the website and verified that it does not come with it. So we're gonna have to wire up one of those ourselves. Not a big deal. Um, if we come down here, we got all of our 10,000 coolant temp sensors. Um, this one, we did not have a connector for either. Honestly, I don't know if that's necessary or not since we already have one running to the gauge cluster here. This one runs to the ECU. This one back here runs to the fan. So to me, I don't think we need another one. Um, honestly, it's been so long since we've worked on this engine. I don't actually remember if there was a reason for the fourth one. So we're just gonna leave that one unplugged for now. Um, if it becomes an issue later on, we'll figure something out. And there's a few dangling here that go to the transmission. So we got the reverse sensor here, speed sensor here. And then this also goes to the starter. So we'll just leave those hanging, but it looks like they're gonna reach. Uh, I got the ground wire hooked up here. 
Then we got my new K-tuned four bar map sensor. So that plugged in just fine. Uh, TPS is here. This is old, but I know it works because the car was running before. So we're just gonna run it that way for now. Um, idle air control solenoid actually worked. I thought it was gonna be pretty tight with having the butterflies removed from the intake manifold, but it seems to fit just fine. So I think we're gonna run it that way. Uh, intake air temp, we're gonna have to replace this sensor because I busted it real bad, removing it from the other engine. I've come down here, knock sensor would normally plug in back here, but uh, both the sensors I have are broken. So uh, I got another one of those on order. Once that comes in, we can plug this one in. Um, bonus points for our American viewers. If you can tell me what this is for. Uh, we got oil pressure switch down here, O2 sensor here, and that pretty much wraps this side up. If we come around here, we have a tucked wiring harness for the alternator, uh, which ends up here. So rather than running it up and over the valve cover, it actually runs around and underneath. So it's nice and out of the way, no one's gonna see it. And then as for the extra wires here, I think we're gonna probably end up uh, running our VTEC oil pressure to this, and then that way we can run it through uh, the firewall with this connector. So uh, that way the engine harness will all be one thing. Um, this is the crank position sensor, uh, which will not be needed because of the distributor that I'm using. So this one has an internal, I guess it would be a cam position sensor on this one. So this one doesn't require the sensor on the front. So it's kind of just dangling there. Uh, next time I have this off and I redo the timing belt or something, I'm probably just gonna remove that sensor. And if we come up top here, we got all four injectors plugged in. So I just have the harness coming up through the middle of the intake manifold and they wired up very nicely, looks very clean. Very happy with that. But yeah guys, that's about it for the wiring today. Uh, we don't wanna do too much more on it yet. Uh, I got a huge shipment of parts today and uh, Tim's here. Oh, hi! He's gonna help me install some of them. So that'll be in a separate video, but for now, we're gonna do a quick unboxing, show you guys some of the stuff we got. So let's get to it. Nice. So some of the stuff over here you guys have seen already, but basically we're going to be unpacking this box. This is a Chase Bay's order. And then I had a glow shift order here. So this one is a sandwich plate so that I can finally get a majority of the oil supply done for the turbo. So I'm still waiting on a flange to come in to complete it, but this will be a major part that will allow me to run the line to the turbo at least. So uh, we're gonna probably install that tonight. Now for the big one. This box doesn't look like much, but there's over a thousand dollars worth of merchandise in here. I haven't seen this, Matt. I'm really excited. Okay, you start pulling it out and I'll see if I can explain what it is. First things first. Jeez, okay, well, stickers make it all worth it. Yeah. Everything else is just gravy. I'm gonna throw in a little plug to iRace Autosports for your Canadian guys. If you're looking for some some parts, okay. they always include a pack of Welch's in their boxes. Oh, Welch fruit snacks, it's really nice. All right, with a little boot. Uh, this, this will go on the brake fluid reservoir, so if there's any spillage, this will soak it up. This is a high flow fuel filter because the fuel tuck kit that I got did not come with a big enough filter, so I opted to go with the high flow it will be an adapter. No, oh, that is a fuel pressure regulator Hi. gauge, I believe. Yeah, it is too. Fuel pressure gauge. Fuel pressure gauge, liquid filled. So that'll fit nicely on my AEM. You are balling fuel rail, I hope. Here, let's uh, let's do a quick uh, quick test here. It should fit on there. Yeah, that should work. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it right now. Okay, what's next? Oh, this was in the box, man. This is how you mount it. No, this is a bracket for another thing. Sure so this is, a, this is a major problem because I had actually ordered what's in this box. This should be the coolant overflow reservoir, which it is. Uh, the bracket that I ordered to come along with this was back ordered until May 19th. So because that bracket was back ordered, they could not ship my order. 
So I switched up to a different style bracket. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but either way, we got the order. So that basically bolts up to there, and then this bracket will bolt up somewhere. I may or may not use that bracket, but at least I got the reservoir. We can make up our own bracket if we need to. But nice that is kit. gonna look uh, very nice in the engine bay. Mm -hmm. All black, of course. What's the rest of it? Yeah, what's next? That little doohickey. That will be an adapter which will allow me to use my Brake Master Reservoir for the clutch. So uh, now I won't need to run a clutch reservoir, I will just run this hose from the brake reservoir to the clutch. So that should clean up the engine bay pretty good, that's one less thing that I have to worry about. Have you test fit any of this stuff? I'm have unboxing it right now. You, you haven't even looked in here? No. This wow. is my first time opening the box. So that'll be the fuel line tuck kit. So as you can see, this is the size filter that it originally came with. Not a high flow and very small. And it's not serviceable. The other one is serviceable. You can uh, get replaceable cartridges for it. Uh, so this one, I figured I would want the highest flow possible. So uh, that's why I went for the bigger filter. And then the rest of this kit is uh, the rest of the fuel lines that you need. Do you suppose this is meant for that um, fuel filter? It might work. Because I don't know what else. Yeah, like it comes with a bracket, so I'm assuming you'd use it somewhere. And I don't know why you would use it with these lines, so it might be for that bracket. We'll figure it out, Tim. What's this here, Matt? That should be the clutch line. So this will be a clutch tuck kit. So it'll be a line from the clutch master to the transmission. Six. Simple. And that's, that's all she and has. And that is that. Tim's pretty stoked about this uh, hose clamp on here. So this hose clamp kind of mimics an AN fitting, but uh, it's just a hose clamp. From here, it looks like an AN fitting. Yeah. But it's a hose clamp. Tim's loving it. Yeah, it's pretty slick. It's quite clever. And then same on this side, and then this end will go on to the brake reservoir. Very cool. I'm excited. We're gonna install that one tonight for sure. So yeah guys, just a little bit of a teaser of what is to come. Uh, we won't be able to finish my oil lines yet until I get that fitting. So for now, I'm still holding off on that. But uh, tonight we're gonna get a bunch of stuff installed. So uh, you can look forward to that on the next video. In this video, we got a lot of the wiring done. Still not all of it, but we got a majority of it figured out. Uh, next thing for the wiring is going to be figuring out uh, how we're going to route the gauge wiring and then uh, figuring out the VTEC. And then there's a few more harnesses that we're gonna have to run through the engine bay somehow. So uh, I'm thinking we'll probably end up going through where the factory speaker wires came through into the door, except I'll run them up through the frame rails instead, and then they'll make their way into the engine bay that way. So they'll still be nice and hidden and still well protected. So uh, I'm thinking that's gonna work. That's probably the route I'm gonna go. Uh, but as always guys, drop a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think on the matter. I'm not saying that. Let me know what you guys think about it, and uh... <laughs> you would say that at work, hey? Eh? Yeah. Let me That's... know what you guys think on the matter. I'm, I don't have to be professional here. Okay, no. But anyway guys, drop a comment below, let me know what you guys think about it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, definitely consider doing so. We've got a ton of content coming on this car and uh, we got racing season coming up this year, some new stuff coming up, so we're stoked about that. And uh, did I say give us a thumbs up? No, but go ahead. Yeah. It's, easy. it's that easy. Hit that like button. We'll see you guys in the next one, because I will be there. Nice.